<clears throat> okay, in this video we're going to talk about the notion of divisibility within the integers. So this is a really important concept for elementary number theory. So the definition is as follows. So definition, so given A and B integers with A not equal to zero, we say A divides B and the notation is we write A divides B, so like a vertical line, if B equals A times K for some integer K. Okay, good. So this is our definition. So let's look at some examples. So some examples, we could say that 2 divides 16 because 16 equals 2 times 4. Good. We could say 3 divides 90 because 90 equals 3 times 30. Good. Notice 1 divides any integer, n, because n equals 1 times n. Great. Um, maybe a non-example, so we could say 2 does not divide 31 because there's no integer where we can write 31 as a multiple of 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, good. I want to clean up the board and then give uh, an important result involving divisibility. Okay, here we want to look at an important result involving divisibility. So it'll have three parts. So the first part is as follows. If A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. So there's some notion of transitivity among divisibility. Okay, great. So the next one is if A divides B, um, then C times A divides C times B. Great. So obviously I'm leaving off like some slight hypotheses about these numbers A, B, and C, but it's easy to fill in those details. And then lastly is if A divides B and A divides C, then for all integers x and y, we have A divides bx plus cy. Good. So I don't want to prove all of these. Maybe I'll prove number one, and then the last two will be left as an exercise. So proof for number one. So let's suppose that A divides B and B divides C. So uh, that means we can write B equals A times K and C equals B times L for K and L some appropriate integers. Good. The next thing we do is we mash these two equations together and that'll give us C equals B times L, which equals, we'll replace B with this, so that's A times K times L. Good. Now we can reassociate, so that gives us A times K times L, which is A times K prime, and K prime is another integer. Thus, we have A divides C as desired. Okay, good. So before we end this video, I want to give one more result about divisibility. I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, finally, I want to prove this last claim about divisibility, which is extremely useful, and that's the following. So, claim if a divides 1, then 
A equals plus or minus one. Okay, good. So that makes sense because if you have something that divides one, it seems like it would have to be a fraction or it would have to be smaller than one. And that's exactly what we're um, getting at here in terms of uh, absolute value at least. Okay, great. So let's prove this. So let's suppose that A divides one. Um, thus, we can write 1 equals a times k for some integer k. Okay, fantastic. And then what I want to do now is take the absolute value of this equation. So that'll give us 1 equals the absolute value of a times the absolute value of k. Okay, fantastic. And now that will build the following inequality. So one is less than or equal to the absolute value of a. So that's true because we're assuming that a is an integer. You know, the absolute value of any integer is bigger than or equal to one. Good. And then that is equal to the absolute value of one over k. Good, just by this equation. And then finally, since this is the reciprocal of an integer, but it's absolute value, this is the reciprocal of a natural number, so that means this is less than or equal to one. So we end up with this sandwich, A is bigger than or equal to one, and it's less than or equal to one, thus, the absolute value of A equals one, and that means that A equals plus or minus one. Okay, good. So this simple claim may not seem that useful, but in many um, other problems that deal with divisibility, um, you'll end up showing that a number is equal to one or plus and minus one by showing that it divides one.